Auburn Football Review. Brought to you by South Central Bell. Featuring Coach Ralph Shug Jordan with Carl Stevens. Good afternoon and welcome to the Auburn Football Review, the playback of yesterday's game against Alabama, won by the Crimson Tide 28 to nothing. But more importantly than that, the end of an era as Coach Jordan ended his 25-year coaching career at Auburn University. Coach Jordan, good to have you with us as we go around for one final time. <laughs> well, thank you, Carl. Uh, uh, thank you for all these many years. Uh, uh, 15, isn't it? 13. 13, well, I can afford to miss it by two today. Uh, but anyway, it's been a lot of fun and uh, everything, and it is the end of an era and a swan song, uh, the end of a line, any way, any way you want to put it. I remember talking to the football team uh, yesterday or the day before about the end of the line, and it was for 21 seniors, uh, more importantly than my end of the line. But uh, there does come a time, and it was a swan song. It wasn't the greatest swan song in the world yesterday, but it was. Uh, the swan song, and oh, there are many people, uh, of course, I would like to, to thank uh, here today, uh, of course, uh, we'll get into uh, uh, Carl, you, and uh, your group, and uh, the other people later on, but certainly I want to thank uh, the administrations at Auburn, and I would like to thank uh, the faculty and the student bodies, and over these 25 years, and assistant coaches and a great many wonderful football players and the alumni and partisan even biased fans of Auburn uh, down through the years. I'd like to thank you all for uh, uh, these magnificent uh, years and if I have made any contribution at all I'm only glad and happy and just plain delighted. I, I don't intend to go any place so I'm not going to miss Auburn. I certainly will miss football I guess. Uh, uh, well, I know I will. I'll miss uh, the, uh, the competition. I'll miss the young people that play the game. I'll miss the preparation. I'll miss all the excitement. I'll miss the adrenaline. But I don't think I'm so old that the adrenaline still won't flow as I watch Auburn football teams play. Uh, and I certainly uh, wish uh, Doug Barfield and his new staff, uh, uh, whoever they might be, uh, every success in the world. And if I can help in any way, I'll only be uh, uh, too glad if I can be a leg man in any way. And then too, once again, I would like to thank uh, Governor Wallace for uh, appointing me to the uh, Auburn Board of Trustees and I hope at the proper time I will be confirmed by the Senate and I hope that I will be able to make a contribution uh, to Auburn in another area or many other areas and uh, good Lord willing and I'll use a young friend of mine expression and if the creek don't rise Maybe I can uh, make some uh, contribution uh, in other areas. Certainly, I will always be interested in Auburn athletics. There are many other people but, uh, uh, that I, I could go on talking. Of course, I would like to say this. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Coach Bryant, his coaching staff, and his wonderful football team uh, for their victory, victory yesterday, and I certainly wish them every success as they go to New Orleans to play in the uh, Superdome against Penn State, and uh, I will certainly be watching that with, uh, in an eager way. About 63,500 fans were on hand at Legion Field in Birmingham yesterday for the game, and there's the last meeting on the field as Coach Bryant and Coach Jordan surrounded by, oh, at least 100, 150 photographers. I guess so, and I've never seen as many flash bulbs and uh, cameras in all my life, and uh, uh, that was just a little salute. I wasn't trying to act like Muhammad Ali, uh, but a little salute to the Auburn student body as they uh, uh, caught my attention with some yells, and I deeply appreciated, uh, pr appreciated that and them. And uh, I must say that uh, I enjoyed always visiting uh, with Paul Bryan. He's a wonderful fella. He's a great coach. Uh, he's a friend. Uh, a lot of people don't think so, uh, think of us as friends, but it's true. And I'm uh, very fond of him. I certainly wish him great success in his other years of coaching. Auburn won the toss, elected to receive. Auburn in the blue jerseys, Alabama in white. The Crimson Tide is kicking off, and it's number seven, Bucky Berry, doing the kicking. Neil and Beck are deep for Auburn. 
and the first kick goes out of the end zone, so the War Eagles put it in play first and 10 at the 20. Bill Gargas, number 11, is the quarterback, and on the first play, hands it to number 44 as he comes to the right, the pitch out, to Cedric McIntyre, and McIntyre is stopped cold by number 45, Wayne Rhodes. Well, uh, that was, that play was well defense. Uh, back to, you know, there's about a 15 or 20 mile an hour win up there ye uh, yesterday, but we wanted the football so, so much that we decided uh, to go against the win, and it didn't work out too bad. That was Kenny Burke's uh, car. Burks picked up three yards to the 23, and it's now third and seven for Auburn. And that's Gargas in slow motion, heading to the right. Again, the pitch out, this time to number 34, Kenny Burks coming at right end. And he has good blocking and a good alley of that. Uh, and then, uh, Kenny, incidentally, his final game was the leading ground gainer for Auburn yesterday. On that play, he picked up 13 yards. And on this play, McIntyre hits the middle for three more to the 39. And we are moving the ball real good along in here. Alabama, of course, we realized uh, before the game had a supreme, supremely good defense. And yesterday didn't disprove it at all. Uh, we didn't make much yardage on the ground. Our passing was a fiasco. Uh, but uh, above everything else, they moved the ball much better than uh, we had anticipated. Here's the first kick. And... Uh, Bum got a Gardner uh, got off a good kick. He, he, his kicking was splendid yesterday, and the coverage was pretty good, except for a few occasions. But I guess the Alabama safety man was, was, a, was a great return uh, a man and gave us a little bit of trouble there. All right, uh, but let's hold on. No way in the world to miss a tackle like that. If your head's up, eyes open, and you're really... Uh, uh, after somebody, but anyway, uh, he didn't gain uh, very much of any. That's Todd keeping the ball. And uh, Auburn fans thought the Tigers had recovered a fumble on that play, but the officials ruled it was after the whistle, and Todd picks up four yards, making it third and seven from the 26. Well, that was the first of two fumbles yesterday that uh, there was some controversy over, and uh, I don't know, I, after 43 years of coaching, I still don't know what a fumble is, and I guess that's uh, an indication of some stupidity or something. Alabama fails to make a first down on their first possession. They punt to Auburn, and Neal returns it to the 37. Coach Paul Davis on the Tiger sideline. First and 10, Auburn at the 37, 9.45, left in the first quarter. McIntyre gets maybe one yard. Well, uh, the Alabama defense, as I pointed out, uh, is a tremendously fine defense. They're very quick, they're very uh, mobile, and uh, they get around real good. They have a lot of confidence, they have a lot of poise, and they've made it real difficult, not only on Auburn, but everybody else they've played. Gargus passed to Gilligan, picked up the first down, then Gargus gets to midfield by picking up three yards. Second and seven. The pitch out goes to Cedric McIntyre at right end, Picks up maybe a yard into Alabama territory to the 49. Well, after the first play there, when Kenny Burks uh, got outside, it was, it was pretty difficult. And here's uh, that just plain ability there on the part of uh, Philip Gargas. He stayed on his feet, maintained his balance, and moved the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, pass protection yesterday was uh, not good. The punt goes to Willie Shelby at about the 14-yard line. He gets no more than back to the 16 before number 48, Greg Gill Gilligan, stops it. We talked about, uh, you know, covering those kicks on the sideline, and uh, I just simply asked the question uh, if some of them thought maybe uh, uh, they were given a fair catch signal. I don't know what it was, or maybe they were overrunning, uh, losing uh, the position of the, of the kick. Uh, that's uh, Davis. Johnny Davis. And what a powerful uh, football player. He's only a sophomore and uh, I think won a scholarship uh, yesterday. I congratulate him. Uh, one of the Alabama linemen uh, won the other scholarship. This is the beginning of Alabama's first touchdown drive. Mike Stock at left end of the 42-yard line. And Johnny Davis this time breaks loose and is finally downed at the 50 by Rick Telliard, number 91. In other words, when you tackle people like Johnny Davis, you're going to have to get him low and get a hold of those uh, uh, feet. Uh, because he, uh, on that last play there, he, uh, they called pass interference there. But anyway, on Davis's last play, uh, he ran over about three Auburn defensive people. 
Pass interference call on the pass to Ozzie Newsom, and Alabama has a first down at the Auburn 34, and here comes Davis. Well, at that uh, business where you get one leg and you don't get them both, and, uh, and he's just like a wild bull when he gets into your secondary with these small defensive backs that we have. Incidentally, that was a fine tackle there by Bill Cunningham, number 25. Todd back, and he's dropped by number 93, Jim Pitts, but the uh, ball had been blown dead, and Alabama penalized for delay of game. And another one of those uh, close situations that makes a difference of some 10, 15 yards. 